All right. Thank you guys for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your patience also. So uh, we're going to talk today about uh, Adobe Certified Associate uh, Certification and the campus testing model. Okay. And uh, my name is Angela Gomez. I'm Jared Hofstede. Who's the name? We're from Golden West College. So there we are. Um, I have an Adobe Education Trainer badge and Adobe Campus Leader badge, so I've been through the ranks, learned quite a bit through Adobe. And we have uh, Darren is also uh, working in the same capacity, trained in the same way, and guidance with uh, he is Adobe Education Leader, and so he's been through not only what we've learned but also now uh, organizing. Our Adobe logo. Okay, oh. so we have a free giveaway. So, Okay, so for the Adobe Certified Associate Certification, um, we, we um, created a campus testing model and we have been working with the students to at this point. So becoming an Adobe certifi uh, Certification Testing site, uh, we worked with Certiport and um, Sean will go into more detail about Certiport uh, to create um, the overall model. And um, as far as sustainable funding models, you're going to well, cover that a little bit. Number one thing, the way you cover the aspect, how much does it cost? It's $5,000 per three weeks. So a single lap. And you can only use it inside that lab for one year, for one calendar year. So like we're, we're December 1st to December 1st. And what that does is $5,000 is roughly an unlimited license, which we'll get to here in a minute. But uh, it allows you to do any of the Adobe products and also do all of the practice testing on that, that site. Uh, so that's the cost. That's really what all comes down to. And sorry, with the sustainable funding, you can sell this test. So in our days, our model was we're going to come in, have all our students get for free. We're looking at other models, working with our deputy sector navigators to actually train other instructors in our area. We'll charge $100 out of paying for that funding. They offer it to their instructors for free. They are paying us as long as we can clear that five grand a year. But you could charge the public. It's in the contract. It says it is your licensing. If you want to charge $500, you charge $500. It's about $169 per month. 
practice test of that. So the, the students will not be uh, charged, so this has been available um, for quite a while for the students, but they, you know, wouldn't uh, pony up to $170 charge or, you know, be interested in why would they want to be interested. We need to lead them to us to understand that becoming, um, an, having an ACA certification will um, not only look good in their resume, not only look good for getting hired, but it also trains them. It, it, uh, it teaches them to brand themselves. It teaches them to use the programs um, thoroughly. So the, this would not uh, charge the students at all once you have the license. Also, studies have proven that they have overall one point higher GPA if they go uh, through the certification process. And uh, I think it's 30% uh, higher completion rate. And that's what we're really looking for in the area for computers, because we have to prove down the line to the state that we are uh, producing computers in our schools. And certification. Yeah, that's all I think about certification. Question? Is there uh, training material provided specifically? Right. And, and we're going to move, uh, yeah, talk about that. We can move on to the next Okay, so I think we've covered the fact that there's a demand uh, to certify the students not only to show their completion rates, but to teach them how to brand themselves, teach them how to use the products, and give them that reward of having the the um, the badge, the title, and um, uh, to feel um, that uh, feel proud of themselves for having accomplished. It's a it's a challenging test. Sure, sure, it was not easy. So, Certiport, Sean will cover Certiport. You want to yeah, do that now? Certiport, actually, one of the things I'll say about Certiport and Ansel is that actually you would want to have questions like contact with Ann Scranton and Certiport contact them, our West Coast rep. Uh, what she did for us was she gave us a ton of free tests up front before we ever bought anything because she wanted all the instructors to get certified. So, she, we, they gave us the testing center, and you become a testing center when you first sick. They gave us these 20 tests plus practice tests. And what we did was we tried to go through, this is early last year, and get all of our instructors passed. So, so then we can say, we've got 18 instructors, and then right now, 15 out of 18 passes the both instructors. We want 100%. So we can say, everyone in our department has an ACA certification. Um, no, it's Photoshop, Illustrator, and uh, actually, mm -hmm. that image. Yeah. There's actually backup. This is the official branding that you'll see out there. There's also the certified associate, certified expert, and then like for us to the campus leader. This is now the brand that it opens to like your dad. Like my business partner now, but all that. But there's all the current examples. So there's a Photoshop CD. It isn't 2014. It is CC, but it's pretty similar for those who are using all of it. Uh, Illustrator, InDesign, Flash, Premiere, Dreamweaver, Edge is coming, so it's news and after effects. And if you have a license, when the new ones come online, you get the new ones as well. So it's unlimited for all the products. So. so these are the core six. Our core has really been Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design. In a perfect world for our graphic design students, these are the three we want to have. they can walk and say, look, I got Holy Trinity here. I got this great. But we also have a large digital media department, and Premiere is becoming a big one for them. We actually had our first three tasks in Premiere. Yeah. And um, Dreamweaver, uh, that's the I teach the Dreamweaver class. I'll be honest, I don't think I can have to do it. I have to do it. And, um, but last two, we're not, these are the four that we're seeing at our campus. That are the big ones. At a high school level, because you said you're high school, right? And actually, any level, this is what I would focus on. And now, think about it, center right here. So the shop is supposed to be all okay. so If we get that one out of the way, then the student also is going to take a pass it. We would like to see them do the Illustrator one next. And even for our digital media people, from there, both shops. Those are the two that we're focusing on. Just because that's, those are the two that are the portable. And it is a difficult task in, in grades because it's not just skills and technique based within the Photoshop 
or Illustrator or any of the other environments, but it also gets into design process, composition. Um, like AMYK, what type of print. So right. It's not just how you use the tool. And, and color theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. color Free theory, uh, rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. like there's things in there that. Photography. Yeah, and that's the other side of it. The Photoshop test does have photography. Photography. very specific, like how you create a raw file, or shows how you prefer the raw file. And for a lot of graphic design people, they're like, what? You know, I never used that. It, it was really good for us to see the test and see the highlights that were required so that as I, I teach Photoshop on campus, I know that I've got to teach to the exam. I've got to raise the bar. I can't just give them, oh, okay, they learned enough for beginners. No, I have to give them more because I want them to achieve uh, the ability to get to this exam and be able to take it. And some people fail the first time around. It's not easy. We, we did 19 students in early December as a trial round, uh, half of the test, and the second time on the 29th, we had 100% pass rate for 20 to 23 Double them took two tests that night. The bills, one took Illustrator and InDesign, and the other took Premiere and Photoshop. And the key to that, oh, there we go. That was that was our December test right? I am. That's all I need. Here's Sean. Yeah. It's online, online, online. No. Nope. We could have done it because we have a three max and a max, so I have four max. And so no, we it is all max. Um, there's some little hiccups here and there. And it's flash based, isn't it? Yes, it is flash based. You can only use Firefox or Chrome or uh, Safari. Or Chrome. You know. So you're not in the actual Photoshop Illustrator or any it's other environment. System. You're in open. Right. So hotkeys won't work. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, the test off style is when you're taking the test is going to be the option, but it's the interface. Yeah. It's flash based. So the way it works is it's, we can't show how it works, but you log in, uh, you go through a system, you log in. We come in and proctor, say you are who you are. It launches up in a full screen and flash. So there's multiple choice questions that are kind of drag and drop. It'll say, how do you say you work? So you can drag and drop them. Then it does a fake Photoshop interface that, that with pull down menus. Right. So which, which platform is it? It is it's actually PC. PC. But it, it looks the same. Okay. Uh, one thing I will say, and this is a little note no key commands. It has to know the menu system. No. We plan to do. No. But we plan to do. We plan to do boot camps ahead of time. No right way. No command. Right. It's file copy or edit copy. So that's something we tell the students before they take the test. Right. So we give them an idea of what they need to know. We also do, uh, we're planning on doing boot camps. So we'll talk about that a little bit for uh, some teachers um, and students. Correct? So the boot camp will include that. But right before the test, we do a little um, oh, tips and tricks. And But we can't, you know, it's hands off for us as proctors, the three of us. Right. So we can't, we actually leave the room, and we can watch them from the box. They have to take it on their own. Uh, we can't help them. And in terms of the way the process that we found the last few exams, I think we're increasing the following. We did this. We got handpicked our students that came from the I could put off those and things went wrong, and we did have some things go wrong with the browser, so it was like that. Uh, but the last two times we used kind of what we're doing now, we go, what? No key commands, keep this in mind, where things are on the page, don't take command Q and put out of your browser. And then we give them a practice test. And what's nice is the practice test has a very similar question, and it tells you what you got right, what you got wrong, and what you can do and so that's an 80 minute test with 80 questions. And what we did the last time on the 29th, two weeks ago, I had everyone start the test. Those parties are going to be comfortable with. You don't have to complete the practice exam. So, you know, if you get through 40 questions and you're not really, I feel good, then we administer the exam by that. And we went from 50% to 50%. Okay. It, and they took another practice test, then they took the test again, and we, we saw better numbers. They were scoring in the 600 for 
for 60% range, they got a 50% range. So they went 50%. Well, they got free retail. Yeah, and that's really we do it. If they want to come in, they have to take it five times. We're going to let them take it five times. Until they take it so let's do it. Okay, so our idea. We allow them to come back and do the book for another section. Yeah, they're, they're random, but there's 80 questions that are randomized in the practice. But I can. If there's, all the if there's 80 questions in the actual exam that are randomized down to 40, and you get 50 minutes on the exam. So it's best to finish the first question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So to be honest, no one, <laughs> no one has ever, we haven't had any problems with anyone running out of time. I think most people complete with about five minutes. Yeah, minutes, I um, finished about five minutes, so I was able to go back and review my, my question. Exactly. And we, we come to our little... No, five minutes left. Yes. Do you have anything that you don't know? You can mark it for later. You know, people who have been along, they'll be like, go back and do it. And you know, uh, I think our average time for this one, I have my bar staff, our average time for this one, it's coming up. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, what's coming up just on the... So anyway, I didn't um, want to go forward. There. Can I talk about the badge real quick? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> the really cool thing is that you're not waiting around for weeks to get your results. You get your results immediately. It's uploaded on the web. And um, that night when I got home, I just recently took the Illustrator test, and I got that to a claim, and I can uh, just sign up, and, and you get your, your badge immediately. So, you know, you, you could then print it out. You have a, an option to print it out, so then if you had to go show an employer the next week or so, you could. So you're, you're not waiting around for weeks. And this badge is for a claim, which is also for a sort of course that appears to be good. For those of you who are at Pino, you know, it's all that same company. And this is the open badge system that was created by Firefox Mozilla. It is part of that system. It's just they're using it. This badge you can put in your Facebook. It, it automatically in, actually inserts it for you for your claim account. And what's really nice too is it puts in your LinkedIn account and it actually puts in a special place. It's not something you normally add in LinkedIn. You have to have a code from a claim verifying that you did it, that it embeds it in your LinkedIn account as a resident ad. You can also, they give you code, you put this on your own website as well. If we have them, then I can jump on my website, I have it all in there. But we'll, we'll move ahead. But this, uh, the badging system, all this stuff you've been hearing about badging, they've already got it down. Very Jump to a minute. Uh, Clean is the company that is kind of handling all the badging for Microsoft. So, Adobe. so if, let's say I passed the Microsoft one of the A plus exams or something like that, and I went to one of Cisco, and I had three or four of the Adobe, if you go to my claim for the box, you would see all my badges there. You would see everything that I have done. So it's kind of like my badge. Uh, but it's all automatic. When you pass the exam, get an email from a claim saying, here's your badge, go do what you need to do. It. it has tools that help you put it over there. And once you put on your resume, it actually has the wording. It is yeah. specifically yeah. put it on there. And we went through the uh, Adobe Train, the trainer program, and you can have all of your badges, and you can put in more badges through that program if you want to do it. And they go into your claim account. So they're all one place for a lot of It's not just the Adobe, like I said, Microsoft's doing it. Other companies are part of a, B, L, A. Yeah, A, double C. Double C. Okay, so moving on to the unlimited license. ad applying for unlimited license and writing up the paperwork for the grant. Uh, we realized that uh, we would be able to uh, accommodate students across all educational programs. Another that um, we were uh, trying to sell to our um, dean and those who have the money. Um, is that there's no restriction or uh, scheduling conf conflict. So um, as far as getting the students, we could give the exam throughout the year because it's a one-year license and accommodates 500 seats. Yeah, it's unlimited. I don't know if you're aware of what's going on, but you're actually going to get 500 seats. I asked if it's only like 500 seats. And the system has a number, so I kind of freaked out when I saw it. And I called them. And the and the uh, students also uh, again I mentioned before the students this was available to students 
all along, but not, they were unable and uninterested to spend the money on it. So having this available to them, I can see them flocking to our classes in droves. They're very interested, and they feel, again, there's that pride of achievement that they were able to pass the test. $5,000 for a single site license. So like if I bought it just for my computers, this would be our smart testing center. I can't take that license and go to my other sister's school and teach. No, it is a set classroom. Yes, yeah. yeah. so that's why. students enrolled at our school or any staff member at our school. So they have to be a school. Not like both are by Orange Coast or Post Life Kids or part of our district. They cannot come and take the point But if you were in a single college, I don't think I'm so many of the colleges show with multiple sites. Yeah, I, I know where you're going because we did this with uh, sort of for, for the MCAS for the yes, math. And, and uh, it was always that question of, well, how did they do They'll be, yeah. and, you know, I'm going to sit there and say it has a certain point. They're very clear in their contract about what it is. But with us, I brought that question up instead. And my OCC people come to do it. She goes, no, they are not full of your school. Yeah. Enroll your district, but not your school. So I, I know a high school that's doing this in the LA area. They started only that high school. Now LA Unified is buying a district wide license. And it was couple million dollars. It is a big, big problem. They're going to be testing all their schools. So you said yes, and I asked. I'm sorry. So, uh, so for a high school in the district, another school in the district, no, I'm those sorry. kids from that other high school in the high school? No, no. I, I just started to say, I don't know how you from other classes. No, no, no. It is a site license. So anyone at that school can do it. Yeah. And that, that is a restriction there. Um, if the other high school need to purchase it, they have to buy a different license. Yeah, so How would they know? Um, that's the, I'm, I'm going to say it's right now. They're not. Yeah, sort of. But they just, because the kids make the profile, and they're going to get a certificate. They, they, they log in through our testing center, and they're going to log To be very honest, no, if I asked the exact question you asked, I asked the certificate. And it's not to say that they're not going to actually figure out how to track it, but they're not now. If, they, if you ask, they, they'll say they... They track that. So right. they know that if I, if I have a different IP that's outside my IP range on my campus, they'll know I took the test and they can track it. Right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, and, and you could enroll them the uh, day long, and that's why this is a textbook workshop. So here we are. It was very clear on that. Okay, then we're going to provide on-site training. So our plan is to uh, uh, provide workshops, and so we'll do a future um, day-long boot camp, and also we'll have someone as a test site administrator. And we'll be giving them practice exams and going over there, teaching them highlights, getting them uh, prepared to, to pass the exam. And then um, also teach them how to maneuver that flash-based uh, layout with, with what Sean explained earlier, which is, you know, don't use any keyboard, um, you know, uh, keys, shortcut keys, and don't do these certain things, don't log out, don't, you know. To teach them how to get you get through the maneuver through it. I want to back up real quick on the market side. Starting, I, I couldn't get it in because my other college campus is now one of the schedules. We are starting in the summer and fall of this year in our schedule. We'll say it's a science and stocks option. We have the option to take it for the case in the fall. So the market thing from our standpoint, my team was very happy with that part. She was five grand. To get the word out, you know, it, it's it's a cheap way for us to market something that no one else has in our region. And to be very honest, with marketing can't put no one else in the region. No one's going to frame in their schedule to what will you guys do? But it says in there, you have the option to make the you know, There is a retail price for it, so we know what that price is. 
So that's the other side of this. The workshops, what we're really looking at is I, I work real closely with all the other sector activities in our area. We're in LA, so we have LA, Orange County, Valley, San Diego. Getting back to what we're saying about really reselling the test is we go to them and say, look, 24 exams, you know, that's $2,400 and on a Excuse me. The other part of that money goes into our fund. That covers all the testing for those instructors. We don't have a time to do the case as well. We call the instructors they come to us, prep for the exam, and for it, then we pass them to the certified at no cost to the instructor. The debt inspector navigators and or other grants will pay for that. But as an end user, as a teacher, it doesn't cost me anything to come to us. It's being so, you know, I, I've been dealing with grants for a long time. I know those check marks. We provided training. We did this. That was our other selling point. So it's, it's a model that's a simple model that could be implemented all over the state. And we're back to the test because of the COVID-19. It has to be once again IT related. So you can see that in your classroom. Yeah, I know everyone keeps asking that. They're like, can I get practice that before I come back? And we're going to do that sometime. Mm -hmm. But if you do a, a little search right now for Adobe, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Adobe has a website with PDFs and all of those kind of stuff for you to set up before. And what we found, just in the two that we did this by doing a little bit longer practice exam, we saw that it was like We say, hey, you're done with the practice exam. We'll log you in. You're ready to go for the real exam. I, I think it works much better. Sorry. Right. Not loud enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so this gets into, I mean, how much time do we have? Uh, about nothing? Okay. All right. Um, so this gets back to what I was talking about before we started with you, uh, the launch board stuff. And so can we go online? I want to show you real quickly. Launchboard. So, Launchboard is something I, I don't have the time right now to do the whole thing. This is a brand new, and it is right here. It's a statewide data system supported by California College Office of Chancellors and hosted by CalPOS. It really it provides data to California community colleges in their K through 12 effectiveness of CTE programs. So, this is a lot of data from all over the place getting aggregated. And like I said earlier, this was the catalyst for why we went ahead with our ACA exams. We need to show in our metrics that we are certifying people, not just giving them certificates. I heard at this conference the other day, or yesterday, someone, I think it might have been Steve Wright, right now in California only one out of 1,000 academic students are actually getting a certificate in the community college system. So for only one out of 1,000 students are doing it. I mean, we're still generating a lot out of those millions. What we're looking at is a student comes in, takes two Photoshop classes. They can then do the certi certification. We show a completion. So in here, we have common metrics, all this stuff. You can do some really neat things. I, like I said, go find Rena Wolzinger. And, but the key here was request access. Is there yes. Let me go into manage real quick. Let's see if I remember all my stuff. All you have to do is have a .edu um, address to get a new user. Uh, sorry. Oop, that didn't work. Okay, try this one more time. Yay. Something good. So what we do every time we do these exams, uh, they're an event. And you can see there's like Cucamonga College Auto Skills Day. Cucamonga College figured out that this was important the other day and put in like 500 events. They, they figured it out. But here we go. So here's our GWC Adobe Certified Associate exam on the 16th. And then this was the one on the uh, 29th. We capture all their data. So when a student comes and takes the exam when they are finished, I have a computer set up. There's a little form that they fill out. 
we get their data. The big thing here is, I really shouldn't be showing this on screen, but oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> now you don't know. Um, but you saw there was email, there was other things on there. Um, name, first name, last name, and date of birth. Those are the key things nationwide that we have to have from a person to track them. If we get those three things, we can match. Uh, it's not perfect, but the more data we get, the better off we are. Social security numbers are also part of this. We do not collect them, but when they fill out the common app, how many of you have seen the new common app for California for community colleges? It's one app for all schools now. They do have to put in their social for their financial aid. From what I've been told, that data is being collected because now they can pull their tax records. They can merge that data. So we now know they went to work. So let's think about that. You had a student. We did a, I'll go, go way back here. I do a high school right here. High School Link, Digital Arts Tour, Concordia University. This is one of mine. So I took a court class from a school in Santa Ana to my other school I teach at Concordia. It's a university. Did a tour. We collected their data here. So all the students who went filled out the form. Then let's say that student comes to Golden West. Well, we know through the other data that that student's there. We've tagged them. So we're showing that we did an event under some type of grant. This was a grant-driven thing. We touched them. Oh, that's probably not the best word. Touched them. <laughs> I, I got to come up with a better word for that. Yeah, we, well, we were involved with them at that moment. And then they move on. They go to Golden West. They graduate from Golden West with a certificate in digital media. We can show that we had some impact on that child at some point. Then they take the AC exam. They pass it. That data is also put in here as well. And I will say this, they are working on a claim and cert report to actually push that data automatically. That happens. Now they go to work. We see in their social security, we see in their tax, they, they're doing 50 grand a year. We can actually show all the way through. That data is now being, I don't want to call it cradle to grave, but we are tracking them all the way through. Completion and success, which is going to become a big issue here as well. That's a really, like, in a nutshell, how this is all working. There's a lot more going on here. But we put in all their exam data. We are tracking them at this point. We are showing completions. That's what, in the end, I mean, I don't want to sound mean, but the, when I look at all this, this is what I need out of it, is we need to show the completions there else. And it's great for the student. It has all those things. And I think Pierre wants us to get out. <laughs> so they're, like, all looking in the dark room. <laughs> It is. It's a win-win, not just for the student, but also to, I'll be honest, the future of how things are changing and how we're going to have to work as educators in the state of California. So, uh, 